and since it was smallpox, nobody could go there. And I remember my mother crying so much. Huh. She could see him. Oh, yeah. And then he passed away. There itself. Yeah. And so uh, I remember the vividly. Uh, anyway, that's a very difficult situation. So he passed away. And then I was alone, my sister. And then at that time, the Charadashram started. Yeah. And they went over there. And again, I was alone here. But meanwhile, you know, I used to help, like Achyudan and everybody else, for celebrations, everything. We'll be around here and just doing celebrations, decorations, or cutting vegetables at night. We could wait two or about two o'clock in the morning. And I remember sleeping on top of the terrace there. <laughs> what is it? What is it? One celebration. Uh -huh. And then, when I sleep there, uh, one one day, one, uh, nobody knew where I was. Uh -huh. I went to sleep on, near one of the towers. Swamiji Samadhi Temple. More like that. And then, uh, my mother was looking for me. Uh -huh. I was uh, sleeping up there. Um, uh, it's, uh, five o'clock or six o'clock, they had the Kadina. Uh -huh. They bother me. Oh, do, 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 do. Yeah, I didn't hear. Uh, uh. I didn't hear. Okay. Used to take care of you? Maybe, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I don't remember. Yeah. yeah. Then one more question. Yeah. Uh, you were five or four uh, you, when you started uh, uh, interacting with Krosi Maharaj. Correct. What was the language you used? I, I just don't know. <laughs> Probably you need to tell me. But you never had any uh, problem of communicating with him? No, no, I didn't communicate that much with him, you know. He, he didn't give my things. From you. <laughs> no, he no, came, no, no, no. came uh, whatever he gave you, except his namaskaram and what else you do. Oh, okay. You don't communicate. Oh. Right. So when he applies oil on your body and give massage and all, he, he, no communication? No communication, no verbal communication. Other than no laugh, verbal communication. You tickling or laughing or something like that. You know. <laughs> okay. Besides Samaji and Namaskaram, I don't know. Okay. Did you ever uh, get uh, scolding from him? No. Never? But I remember getting over there, sir. Oh. But uh, no, no scolding at all. Not at all. I don't remember that. Means, sir, no. sir, you are very special. Okay. I don't remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Well, we knew I was too yeah, small. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So please continue, sir. So, uh, yeah, I was thinking, is there anything more memorable? No, no. Uh, I uh, uh, brother about. passed away. Then uh, brother passed away. Uh -huh. Then it will become really bad situation other than the health from the ashram. So we will tell which is fine. Then Vishan Swami came. The Vishan Swami came and he was um, he saw me, I mean with the whole family. Then the brother passed away and there's no nobody to take care of me. And the sisters they went to the ashram of business. So he said he did me um, to Trivanda. Trivanda So uh, that was in nineteen thirty nine or forty. Yeah, 40, 40. 90, 40. Because after this uh, temple was inaugurated in December 1939, okay. immediately he was uh, transferred by Beluma to Trivandrum. Okay. So that was I went with. Yes. Uh, so he took me as a um, uh, grace. Uh -huh. I don't know anything about it. So he went there. And he said... Uh, you were in which school? Um, until then I was in the... Niranjan school or nothing. Okay. That's all. And Trivandrum? then we went there. So, so, so I remember going from, we stopped with the Guru Guru Maitis, I told you, to shoot. And uh, so we stopped there and then from to Anagaram. And then Bhujanam Sai was there at that time. I remember there. We took it. You know, he, he was running an orphanage or something. Beggar home, beggar home. Something like that. Yes, yeah. I have seen that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then we went from uh, boat to, I don't know, Alapra, yes. or something yeah. like that. Went to Alapra that way. And then I was staying with uh, Sami at Shastra Mahara, yes. and then, which is the Pravita Kerala, obviously. Yes. So, uh, 
uh, there. Uh, you know, I used to run errands and all that. Then he took me to the uh, model school in Toronto, yes. which is the premier school yes. at that time. I don't know. Even now. now. Even now. So, but my previous education was kind of scant in terms of the school and no the real big school. So, so they said, uh, give me a test. If they pass the test, they will admit it me in first form. On the first form. Other. So, I don't know whatever I did. So they said, okay. And so, then, so I got admitted the first form. So I, then I was there almost two years until he some of that time he left. But a couple of examples that I was, remarkable thing was uh, uh, at that time the, the piece was <coughs> three dollars, I mean three rupees or something like that. So uh, this this talks about it. Besides some is character. But the principal uh, principal or whatever you call them now, the it's school master, master uh, said Sami, you buy, you have to pay that rupees. Uh, uh, you don't have to pay. You have to tell me, uh, you know, he said, if you are a Nambudri kid and if you are from Travancore or Koche, we will accept the tuition. Uh, so he said, Samaji said, you know, he is born in Palapra, Katapa. Uh, so I cannot lie. She said, no, no, I don't know. She said, no, she says, parents are from Cochin, from wherever that was, you know. So it's not a big life. She said, no, I don't want any money like that. So he didn't accept that. No. So that's why I get some value teaching at that time, you know. I do have to always be truthful. Then Mr. Anand Swami continued paying that tuition fees? For, for a few months. Huh. But the, the principal, he did his own, but our government appeals. Uh -huh. They took this piece away. Oh. As a, as a so, but basically the thing was, <coughs> he did not want to make lie. it lie, yes. lie for that thing. Yes. So, these are life examples for three dollars, there's no, no, no lie. That's right. uh, so that was, then I was there, uh, then he had to go. Or whatever pilgrimage or whatever he was, he went there. But when I was at the ashram, that when the, the uh, I told you about the dispensary, they started and everything, and then there was a, some other LMP doctor or something like that. And the, not Keshav Nair and all that was not part of the doctor community. So this is the to make it simple mix, to mix the medication, and they're very popular. So several hundred, probably hundred, hundreds of people were benefiting by that. It's a small building. That is what the provincial of Kerala office was. You know, I used to help. In the records that Pace, is uh, that is known as Narendra Mission Hospital. Oh, is that right? It yeah, is okay. Sohan the Swami's uh, book. It oh. says oh. Narendra Mission Hospital, who, who was under the charge of Swami Vijayananda. Vijayananda. Okay, yeah, I remember, you know, handing out the medicine to the patient. Yeah. So, some you will make it. So, and then the carbonated mixture thing. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, that was, I remember that pretty well. Uh, but, uh, and then he would give me uh, money. But like, for example, ashram did have it, like 4 o'clock, go Tea. buy some something to eat with them from local family. Some snacks. And I would go out and eat something. Like that. But I used to walk to school from Rashtra Ashram to modern school every day. Once in a while, Keshanar, Keshanar, other Keshanar. Dr. Keshanar. He might see me on the road, give me a ride in the, in the car right, to the school. So it went out for two, almost two years. Then, Musan Samaji left. I was still out there and then he wanted to stay there. He wanted me to bring me back here. So that's what happened. I came back. I took after two years I came to here, came back and said, school I went to Atapala High School. Which school in Atapala? Atapala High School. 
also at their small house, small brother place. So as if I could, uh, if I, they would accommodate me to go to Telicherry and go to Brennan College. Oh. So that means there is no, so Swami, I know you might have paid press fees a month or whatever. So I went to Brennan College for two years. So finished my intermediate degree there. And then again, as it turned out, you know, I was I did well. So went to the law degree, BSD. BSD happened to be at the Rao, Maharaj's College. Oh, Maharaj's College. Yeah, because I could stay in the ashram of the Maharaj at Vaitila. Prajnana Swami. But Prajnana Swami. That house that was being built at that time. Uh -huh. So during the construction, there was a small ship. Small shutter building there, and we could do that. So we did that. Then again, I finished my BSc there, and as it turned out, I did very well in BSc. And that was the end of that chapter. From Maharaj's College. From Maharaj's College. From there on, then I came back here. Uh, then, it, but of course, my sister and mother, they're also in Yasin Charles Ashram, and that's going well. But I was not completely into the Monastic. sannyasa mode. Uh, so I want to go see things or want things, material things. So Swamiji said, uh, see whether there is another devotee called uh, Narayana. Narayana, yes. VK yeah. Narayana? VK Narayana. His children were Madhu and Nair and uh, B.U. and Nair. They were in Bombay. So he said, well, why don't you go see what, uh, what you can get. So, so I went with it to that. But I remember correct, must have in 1950, uh, Vijay Dasmi Day. 58? 1950. Oh, 1950 Vijay Dasmi Day? Nothing. Oh. I left oh. from here oh. to go to Bombay. Oh, yeah. Oh. So that I was, uh, for a while. Uh. Then I met some friends who happened to be going to Bombay University. Oh. So I asked him, how can you do it? You know, what do you do? So he connected me with a professor at the Bombay University Department of Chemical Technology. Oh. So, uh, no, before that I was working in Godridge. And uh, I was working in uh, the, uh, the ship chemist. He got the swap again by him. Yeah, yeah, both ways, yes. Uh, so I was working, um, in, uh, so as a ship chemist. And after a few months, you know, I was in charge of one ship. Oh. Whatever ship was running, so uh, I was in charge of my ship. And the three ships are there. And the other two chem chemists in charge, they were all married people. Okay. So I would tell them, no, but then I went to the university and finally got it, ad admitted to the, pro the master's program. So I told, uh, uh, no, I told the other two people, chemists, he said, you know, I will take your night shift. I'll exchange that so that I get the day shift. If they don't like the night shift, so evening shift and night shift, whenever possible, once in a while I'll go to go to the day shift because I try to avoid the day shift. Day shift I'll go to the college okay. and then come, come. But like, uh, for example, you know, Bombay. Uh -huh. the, at that time, the college was at the lower prayer. Oh. And, and the, the way li life in Bombay at that time for bachelors uh -huh. is very hard. No home, nobody has. So somebody would rent a room for three or four bachelors. Uh -huh. and what say? Together. Together. They, they, will, they will buy a flat, two room or three room flat, and they will have one or two. And the, and the other one room, they will rent to, let's say, four, four bachelors in that thing. And when, and, uh, and maybe six months or so, after that, you had to move to somebody else because they are, uh, and, oh, that is a funny thing. These people will have a family. The family will be in Kerala or Madras or something. And only the guy will be there. And after they may be they may having a child or something like that, they send all the family home. And that room becomes vacant. 
So we go they rent it out. So when the family comes, so I have to look for some other place. You know? So we did like that. I had a couple of problems. But so I would work as a day shift, not day shift, night shift, and uh, most mostly night shift. And then in the daytime, I go to uh, university, Bombay University, University of. The Department set, of Chemical Technology. It was a tough, tough. Well, it didn't, it, it, nothing bothered me at that time. Okay. And then I had a bicycle, so I used to drive about yeah. uh, maybe uh, 30 miles a day. Mm -hmm. I was in saving like that. I was in saving barley, barley at the morning, yeah. and my friend, my friend's Bagri Krishna. You know, I stayed with him for a while. So they, they were making the morning breakfast at five o'clock. He was working in Chembu. Oh. And so by the time um, breakfast and maybe six o'clock, I was for bicycling to Matunga. And Matunga go to finish at two o'clock. I will uh, bicycle to Chichpu, go to the lower parallel Gaza company. Then I'll be from three to eleven, I'll work. And eleven I will bicycle back to work. So it is going on like that. And it's funny that and I had good friends, mostly Maharashtrians and uh, Bombay, Gujarati people. And, uh, so, uh, in the college, so I'm there in daytime from maybe, you know, 8 or not, 8.30, whatever it is, till 2 o'clock. So I had to take some classes, but they all knew where we were. Uh, at, some out of the language class, or take German, oh. and that is usually after after the other class, like a three o'clock. Oh. So whenever they ask the person to take attendance, somebody will reply <laughs> that they fear sir. Oh. Well, one day they caught them somebody, so they know I was not there. But anyway, that is a fun thing anyway. But I will do the bicycling uh, roughly for thirty miles from the over there. And then go to my friend's house, up house and then take the cycle back out of the fourth floor. Okay, you cannot lay them down here. Yeah, somebody will take them. Yeah, so it, it went on like that. So I didn't have a, my own house. We lived there for several, several years like that, until 1957, I think. Then, you know, I thought of... Uh, you know, I, I see a friend, a lot of friends, they were going to the United States at that time. And more than that, there was one professor there who came from U.S. And uh, he said, you know, if you are, told my professor, if you are good students, why don't you we will send them over there, we will give you a teaching fellowship, we will give you, you know, hundred dollars or something like that. Then you have to teach the undergraduate classes, and you can do your uh, the, uh, tuition free for the master's program or graduate program. So my professor told me, uh, "Can you? Well, here is a letter from the uh, from the uh, board. If you are interested, apply for it." So, uh, me, meanwhile, I was applying on my own to different campuses, uh, but I got admitted in Canada. I was like, oh, why don't you wait, you know, so I didn't go to Canada. So here, uh, then this is in Los Angeles, so he, he said, why don't you apply for a university in Southern California, it's a big university. Yes. And he said, so I got admitted there. Then I had to go to get there somehow. So I don't have the money to get there to transportation, you know, because you know, yeah. with 150 rupees a month. You know. yes. So I got a uh, travel grant from Tata, oh. Tata Scholarship. Oh. So they gave the travel expenses. So I got a, by ship I went to New York. Oh, ship? By, yeah. How many days it took from Bombay? That one was, uh, the ship took roughly 14 days oh. to Southampton, from Bombay to Southampton. Oh. Mm -hmm. Through Suez. So she was going to yes, correct, yeah. It's a good experience, yeah. For that thing. And in Southampton, yeah. then you take another ship. I stayed there a few days uh -huh. until the next ship. Oh. Went to New York. Crossing uh, Atlantic. Correct, yeah. 
But then I have to go to Los Angeles. Yes, sir. Yes. That's right. But no. And bus. By bus? Graham bus, yeah. Oh my God. So it is, well, that is uh, four or five days yes. in the bus. So I went there and I got to the, got to the college and met it there. You, you landed up in uh, L.A.? No, no, I landed in New York. No, no, then by bus? But by bus to Los Angeles. Uh -huh. kind of. But the college is in Los Angeles. Yeah. Yeah, so mm -hmm. the next day I was... UCLA. U UCLA, University of Southern California. Oh, That's yeah. the other... Uh, uh, yeah, one. Yeah. The two. Two UCLA yeah. is Southern California. Yeah. This is University of Southern yeah. California. So, and I stayed in a hotel there. Dollar fifty a That's all. Uh -huh. That's the whole. Dollar fifty a month? Yeah. No, for a night. For a night, yeah. For a night, yeah. So the next morning I went to the college and told them, so they said, And then they have me with some other students, bought a, bought a place in, near the campus. I was a room in some other house, you know. So that went to, the career started there. Then after a while, uh, about two years, I was uh, moved for some professor changes and all that. I went to no, Michigan. Michigan. That's where I got my PhD. For that. So, University of Southern California, you took uh, which uh, degree? MS? No, I did not finish the MS. Uh -huh. I was, took a lot of classes. Okay. But then I transferred all that Michigan. to Wayne, Wayne State University in Michigan, in, uh -huh. in Detroit. Uh -huh. Detroit. So I came there, and that's where I finished my uh, PhD. So it's a lot of, lot of friends help me throughout the career. For example, you know, trying to go to uh, to U.S. didn't have any money, so he said I'll help you. So, but I said I didn't need, finally I did not need anybody's help because I got the talent. But a lot of other people. The same way. When I was staying with the Balraman's house, we, we, um, Nair, the Vekay's son, he was another very honest guy. That was the time for the rationing. And of course, here, you know, you're um, used to rice and all these things. Uh, in, and the, at the ration time, you know, in Bombay, you would get any rice. And this guy was so principled, he will not buy anything in black market. Oh, so practically no rice. So they get enough rice for one meal a week. Oh. That's the only rice. So, but most people bought things in black market, but Aznair will not buy. You, you remember that house? I, I, I know Aznair very well. Are they? Yes, yes. So they wouldn't buy anything in black market. Yes. So, so we used to eat everything else. So that, I mean, it's a good training. Looking back, it's a tremendous training. Because I don't have any uh, particular desire, I want this or I want that. Mm -hmm. So it's every one day might be some golden milk or some day it's their bread, sometimes it's something else. So that's, uh, uh, that's the way well, my training, all these are training, you know. And so, so I, even now I don't have any problems. I don't want any rice, I don't. whatever is uh, okay. So, the same way then I went to California, at that time I was a pure vegetarian, when I get there. And it's at that time there are no Indian cutting <laughs> over there. I know, very few, about four or five children to the campus, you know. And no, no Malay is nothing. <coughs> but and I was a vegetarian. So can you imagine going from New York to Los Angeles by bus? How did you manage? Uh, four days. Yeah, by eat uh, toast and jam and uh, apple. But that, nothing bothered me. I was the thought part. <coughs> and then, luckily at the, in the, in the rooming house, I was there with somebody's house, the rented room. There was another gentleman, another kid who was called. He's from, I think it was Seventh day Adventist or something like that. And that group, vegetarians. Oh. Yeah. So I blacked out, connecting them. So he would 
take me to the store and tell me, and you can buy hot dogs, but there is no meat. Okay. And you can do that. And so it showed me certain things, what we eat, and also the Macau, that area being more Spanish in food, you could get Mexican food, which is tough. Tortillas is just like a party. Yeah. So you don't, you know, you get to adjust with them. So you buy some potatoes and make them boil some potatoes. And then buy chapat tortillas. And that, that's, a, that's how we grew up there, you know. So we came. Gradually I did become a non-vegetarian, but I don't relish it. Uh, but I would eat you know, some of the non-vegetarian stuff. So then I got my PhD, and once I got my PhD, then everything is sort of smoother after that. So all these uh, onward journeys, uh, you took a permission or rather approval from Mr. Swami. Did he encourage? No, he didn't. Did not discourage. He did not discourage. Yes, that's all. Oh, yes, sir. It's all my own. My own. Everything is my own. I just let them know, but. I know my mother and the people were disappointed, but I was trying to go because I wanted to go on an adventure. Yeah. That's what he did. But he did not object. But he used to send letters to me all the time. And all these gracious letters. I have some of them still with me. Okay. I always encourage. So when did you join uh, this uh, uh, Chevron? I was about 19. Sixty-five. So after PhD, only uh, only say after PhD, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. So <coughs> for there for I was um, at that time from Michigan. I went to Niagara Falls. I worked, started working with them. Uh, then I got transferred to Delaware. And that's what I can do. That's the my You were always in the lab. Lab and uh, uh, and promoting technical things outside. So come up with something, or somebody would come up with a problem. So you could do all the research involved with that one, and if it looks promising, you go to it to the customer. So I to go and work with the customer to do that kind of thing. But more or less uh, restricted to always with the technology. When did you start uh, uh, research or working on uh, degradable plastics? Oh, that was all much later. Oh, that's a wrong story about plastics. You know. <laughs> no, 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 just uh, uh, touching on this. Somewhere uh, around 1970s. The 70s. Uh, that's when uh, I have lived a couple of minutes with them. The, the, at that time, it's a major problem because in U.S., it's a waste is a big problem, and they, everything is packaged and throw things away, and somebody had to collect it. So there was what they would do is they collect all that, put in a, some big heap mountain, and that got filled up. So then they would collect all that thing, put it in a ship, and send it over to some other place. So. One ship. At that time, people were getting um, kind of aware aware of the issue. So that ship left New York, and uh, was a big uh, la landfill, based landfill, and started going to one of the islands. And th they got warned about this one, and they would not let the ship land there. <laughs> so that ship went on going round and round. So it became big news, the big garbage barge. And the, because of that, the people's awareness became a big, big issue. And Dupin, my company, and then, is perceived as a big innovator for plastics, you know. And so we had to do proactively something. And then my general manager was the pioneer. Said, okay, we got to do something about it. So, he chose me as his technical uh, man to come up with the uh, solutions. So that when it's probably 1970 something like that. Yeah, that's how it went. 
your Laotian uh, award uh, gold medal was based on this? No, no, no. Uh, that's uh, over uh, to about 30 years of major contributions in different areas, you know, for the packaging, uh, for con containers, you know, automotive, and uh, um, high, high, high performance materials. How do you use that? So the, the whole thing, the whole contribution to the company. That's Sir, were you involved in DuPont FRC trophy? FRC? Fire retardant trophy? DuPont, DuPont, that is their, one of the uh, premium products. No, I'm not, I'm not involved with that. I was aware of some of those things. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, so that's a uh, DuPont story. Then I, I retired in 1998, but then I continued to work with uh, DuPont and also I was, you know, uh, on the lot of outside, um, what do you call, societies, plastic societies, where I was, you know, organizing conferences for them, plastic recycling and things of that nature. So promoting that, talking to them, teaching them how to do the whole bit. That's how it uh, built up my experience in uh, expertise, in uh, more uh, dealing with plastic issues. So I've been very active until maybe five years ago. Now I'm Sir, uh, when uh, uh, the award was uh, announced, before that we saw some list uh, apart from uh, approved patents. Some of the uh, patents are still pending. All those. Uh, ah, they, now, yes, but they're all issued. They're all done. Yeah, Thirty or forty patents. Still pending. No, no. Now that's all gone. It's all yeah. gone in the sense, either issued ah. or the time has all expired. Time has expired. We saw a list pending. Yeah. Now we gotta get. Let me get back to something. Else. <laughs> this, this might be interesting. So, uh, when, when I got my PhD and all that, you know, I did not have any connection here, no relatives, because my mother and sister were sannyasins. So, in my mind, they are completely cut off, right? Sannyasins cannot, don't have anything. So, you know, I, I felt I didn't have anybody. Any relatives here other than cousins and cousins, and I did not expect to get married in India. Uh, but meanwhile, unbeknown to me, Nali's father was a very uh, devoted to Visan Samaji. So he said to Visan Samaji that you know, she would that he would like to see Nalini marry me. But then she didn't know, nobody knows what I, what I am, what I did. And the Bissan Sami were told, uh, you know, told him, I don't interfere with any of this. This is not my business. If you want it, uh, forget Chinmaya, Sami. Chinmaya and Sami. Correct, yes. So, so he wrote me a letter. So that's when, you know, the thought emerged that maybe I will have a connection in India. Until then, I did not think about having any um, connections in India. So, and his, the, her father insisted that she marry me, and she had, he had not seen me. How oh, she agreed? No, that's what they, that's a miracle. That's all, nothing. And there is beyond me. So he, the only thing he knew about me was. I was connected with Ashrama and I, apparently I have a good reputation, so I don't know. And, and he knows Ms. Sansami and devoted to Ms. Sansami. So he said, uh, you know, he, he said, and he, even he died and I could not visit him because I didn't have a visa to come. I couldn't come. You know, I, could, I couldn't go back. So, uh, but then I, after he passed away in 1966, I came here, we had a marriage here. But, I did not think I'll have anybody looking after my interests in, in this country. Because I did not have any. Because in my mind, they are yeah. gone. Yeah. And besides, I mean, doesn't want to get involved with the yeah, marriage. Um, marriage and things like that. You know, so, 
So I, that is totally unexpected. But that's why the marriages are made in heaven. heaven. That's why we cannot do that. And Sami. So that's what, where I am now. Uh, do. Thank you very much. I've been, I guess, I've been blessed. And, and the, the, as I said earlier, my my only, uh, I mean, some, whoever has helped me, Savior, I should say, that literally means to me, this is the only uh, person or individual or divinity that helped me who I am. So nobody else, Tulsi Maharaj and Vishal Sami. And everybody connected with that. And that is the point. That is so always, you know, I'll never forget that. And, uh, so now it is time for me to say goodbye almost. Yeah. So that's it. But I've, I've been the most blessed person. Nobody, no other um, devotees or other children, even actually children, you can tell it. Because they are well to do people, you know. But if we were not, you know, we didn't have anybody. So that, so total uh, dependence on Samadhi. And, uh, there is, and the reciprocity of that. So I don't think that anybody else will, who are as much obliged. Samaji as I am. Thank you, sir. Okay.